Hey gang, welcome back to the big board. Let's take a look at Crusader from the standard combat system and our combat series and have a look at how it all kind of hangs together so far. We're three turns in and this is all about the 8th Army uh, in the uh, latter part of 1941, I think November, December time frame. Yeah, November 1920 through December 910. And it's published by MMP, as you probably know, or more, more accurately, uh, the game is, which was acquired by MMP. So if you're familiar with the standard combat series, you'll be very familiar with this game and the, the mechanics that go into it. There are no special rules for supply, no special rules for uh, you know any sort of unique attributes that may have been uh, considered during this campaign. You do have air counters. Uh, there are no reserve counters or anything like that from Stalingrad Pocket or whatever the case may be. So, all in all, vanilla standard combat series, which is a good thing. There are a couple of differences when you start that you don't really realize till you start playing, and that is some of these movement rates are monstrously big. Let me see if I can just zoom in on a couple of guys. Here we go. Here's a let's check this dude out here. See this British or this uh, German armor? 20 MPs. Now, you may think, well, okay, Kev, what's the big deal with 20 movement points? It's neither here nor there, uh, you know, versus 12. Well, when you start looking at trying to isolate forces and put them out of supply, which is one of my favorite things to do because it's an easy, cheap way to get. Uh, a halving of the enemy's capacity to fight and move <clears throat> it doesn't work out so well with with these guys uh, particularly where the supply phase is done because it's done after combat so 20 movement points means that I can move into a zone of control move through a zone of control and out and still have the capacity to move a fairly substantial distance so an ex a case in point would be our, uh, our little brothers over here, the, uh, the Arit, I think it is how you pronounce that, Arite, Arit Division, Italians. They all have movement rates between 12 and 15. I had them basically surrounded here and they just went, oh, okay, that's nice. They were, we had them uh, trapped in Bia El Gubi, Gubai, <coughs> right there. And no such luck, the, the 22nd Armoured had him, uh, I thought I had him all bottled up and I had the first South African uh, uh, assisting and these guys just managed to wiggle their way away. They told off back down the road, then uh, waited for the, the, the allies to continue their movement. And now the Germans are, and the uh, Italians are going to try and put some pressure on the seventh, uh, the seventh armored corps advance here, uh, or division, I should say, divisions advance here, and really start trying to mess things up. This is a very challenging, swirling tank battle style game uh, with no real front lines. So, if you like front lines and you need uh, no chaos, don't play this game because this is all over the place and it's a little challenging to work out actually what to do. Uh, I, I initially had, uh, as the allies of the Commonwealth force, you know, brought my units in up around here, tried to encircle here, then couldn't. Then I started to lunge up this way a little bit, uh, killed a couple of units here and there. Uh, the losses have been, there's probably six units lost for the Axis, but really only artillery stuff in the main. And uh, <clears throat> for light losses, relatively light losses by by the Commonwealth. So this is kind of a, a swirling battle. Uh, what this did do you know, by pushing up this way was pull the DAC and uh, 21st and 15th Panzer this direction, so west, away from Bardia and the Hellfire Pass. But uh, that uh, is not aiding us in our uh, relief of uh, Tobruk and it has been somewhat expensive. There are a couple of attacks that went down here uh, over in this part of the map as the Germans were leaving 
yeah, that uh, really put a couple of hits on, I don't know where the units are now, put a couple of hits on the, the Commonwealth forces that were pretty hefty. So over on this part of the map, we've got Hellfire Pass, Bardia, Solemn, and Hufford Ridge, and just a couple of units from the 15th Panzer, the, the primary uh, tank uh, battalions. We're trying to take out the 7th Indian here because it seemed like a good idea at the time. And that uh, ended up being a, a just a one, a one step loss to these guys and they didn't have to retreat. Uh, next attack, of course, they'll be isolated so we'll be able to uh, get some better rods on them. And we've still got this uh, force, you know, the 21st Panzer uh, Infantry Unit here, uh, stuck in Hellfire Pass with supply, no less. So that's going to be hard to root out there. We're going to try and reduce this this hex first that's in fortifications, and then we'll go from there. Now I couldn't, uh, you can't just pile everything in around here because I, I had to protect these areas from a lunge, 20 movement points, you can get a long way on this map at uh, one third a movement point for white highways and a half a movement point for roads. You could get down, and if you capture these uh, at the edge of the board, there are these uh, supply zones. Uh, my understanding is that it, no, it can no longer be used then as a supply zone uh, at all. Uh, so that would then severely limit the the effectiveness of the Commonwealth forces. So they had to provide some sort of screening here to really protect uh, supply zones. Now, the same the same could be said also for. I imagine for the uh, for the Germans, their, their supply zones are a little harder to get to. They're all the way over here. So uh, the siege of Tobruk has proved to be also an interesting little puzzle to try and resolve at the moment. We've got <coughs> basically, a, excuse me, basically a you know a, a series of units behind a. Uh, you know, trench line and AT, AT ditch and all that sort of fun stuff. So attackers are, uh, defenders are doubled and attackers are uh, halved, I believe. And um, so really you need to get a DG on these guys using your artillery. But anything in this, this trench line uh, forces the artillery die rolls down four columns. And despite having max, uh, max arty on <laughs> just one hex, uh, we were not able to do anything effective for the last you know, two or three turns here. So, an interesting puzzle. I can see why this was one of the popular uh, SCS titles. And we'll continue to bang away at it and we'll get some more, uh, some more gameplay uh, updates in in just a little while. And perhaps if uh, I have some time, we'll, uh, we'll do some live play as well. Look forward to talking to all of you soon. Hope you enjoyed a little uh, sneak peek at... Crusader.